Okay guys, um, I'm going to tell you a slight variation of the, the Kaylee Herwing. Now, the Kaylee um, fly, if you like, was a fly that was first tied by a gentleman called Alan Donaldson. Now, very successful fly. There's three flies in the range, if you like. There's the Herwing, the Kaylee Wellington Shank and the Shrimp. So I'm just going to tell you a slight var variation on the Herwing pattern. Um, the hook I have on the vise is a size 12 Partridge Patriot double in black nickel. The thread that I'm going to use to tie the fly is uni thread 80 in black. Uh, I'm just going to start a couple of mil behind the eye of the hook. Run on a few mil of thread and remove the waist tag. Now the tag on the fly is an oval silver tinsel in small. So I've just got this wee bit off from the last fly that I had tied. So we'll just catch this in underneath the shank, bring it in underneath the shank of your hook and then just run your thread down tying this in. I'm just going to bring the thread down once I let the bobbin go just slightly past or in line with the point of the hook. Doesn't really matter, either one will do. And then I'm going to come around with four turns of the oval silver tinsel. And on my last turn, bring it up and in between the two hooks. And this will lock in your tag. Just come around with a turn of thread. And a couple of turns to hold. Yeah, just going to come in and trim this the length of the body. Just want to try and keep everything as smooth as possibly calm. The tail on the fly is just a orange cock haggle fibers. So, just going to bring the fibers out and just sit out from the stem and then just take a pinch of them away and the length of the tail if you want a longer tail just use a longer faber or a longer hackle which will give you the longer fibers now I just want my tail to be the right about the length of the hook over the back I'm just going to come around with a pinch and loop and a couple of turns to secure and hold it in place. Then I'm just going to come in and take the excess away in a tapered cut. At this stage I'm just going to concentrate and just tie in the cut ends of the cock haggle fibers. Just running my thread up, tying it all in. And the way back down, I want to catch in my rib, and my rib is going to be the Ultra Bar and Silver by UTC. So just get a length of this off. Much like I did with the oval silver tinsel, just going to catch it in underneath the shank of the hook, bring it in underneath, and then run my thread back down tied up against my tied up against my tail now the first the rear part of the body is going to be the copper tinsel and I'm using the copper and blue uni miner so this is in size 12 now we want the copper shade so I'm going to tie it in with the blue side facing up just pull it in the length then run the thread up tying this in then you can just come around with your tinsel I just like to get a nice straight turn going just at the back just want to have a wee check ok happy enough with that and then just overlapping turns of the tinsel up the first part of the body follow it around with your thread a couple of turns off secure this in then just come in and remove the excess next part of the body is just black floss this is just uni floss in black so knock a bit of this off the spool offer it up to the hook just come right just like to come around with a loose turn and then just pull it in 
for the length of the second part of the body. Let's run my thread up. I just need to take the floss through my fingers just to open it up a bit. Give you a bit better coverage. And then just touching turns of the floss up the second part of the body. A couple of turns catches that in. Come in, trim away the excess. Then we can bring up a rib. And you're looking two turns of the silver wire on each section of the body. So four turns should be plenty up to there. Call it around with your thread. And then a couple of turns to secure that in. Now, if you've got designated scissors, you can cut this away. But I just like to bend and break away the wire. I'm just going to carry my thread on down to the eye just to get a bit of material down. Or a bit of thread down for the materials at the front, sorry. Next on the fly is just a orange cock hackle. You're not looking at anything too long. We small hackle will do. Is your Tennessee's 12? Just going to offer this up with a couple of turns to secure the tip. I'm going to fold the tip back. Bring my thread turns back up over the tip and the hackle. Come in and locate the tip, break it away. And I'm just going to come in with my scissors. Just stroke the, the fibers back. Now I'm only looking a couple of turns here. Two at the most. Will do. Plenty there. Just going to follow it around with my thread. A couple of tight turns in. Then you can come in and trim away the excess. Now, anything that's wanting to go forward, just sweep it back with your fingers and secure that in. Next, you just need another pinch of the orange hackle fibers again. This is just going to be an underwing. I'm just going to offer this up. Just want this just slightly shorter than the tail. I'm just going to hold it there with my finger and thumb. Come around with a pinch and loop. A couple of tight turns to secure that in. Just fold these back. Nice pair of sharp scissors here. Trim away the excess. Now, on the original pattern at this stage, if you're going to put a wing on, you can put on some grey squirrel tail dyed black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some black fin raccoon, and it's just because it's more mobile, <coughs> I feel, than the um, grey squirrel tail dyed black. Really good material, the fin, the fin raccoon. So just taking a pinch off the patch. And I'm just going to offer this up. I just want this just to be slightly longer than the orange underwing. So basically that's just coming back until it's in line with the, the tail. So I'm just going to hold it here with my finger and thumb. Around with a pinch and loop. couple of tight turns now just to make sure it's nice and secure then I'm going to come in and trim away the excess I'm just going to take my thread down over the cut ends just to tidy this up a wee bit and bring my thread back up in the position now there's a wee throat on the haggle it's just guinea fowl feather dyed blue same again, just bring them out from the stem, just come in and pinch them away. Nine times out of ten, the tips will line up. I right. just want these to be the same length as the haggle underneath. So, just going to offer them up. Come in and pinch them, then pinch and loop your thread up the way. Come around with a couple of turns now. If you've got a face that you can rotate, it's half the battle. I'm just going to spin this round. I just want to see what way we're 
sitting. I'm just going to spread them out a touch. Come in with another couple of tight turns. Okay. I've got the vise up like this and rotate it around. I'm just going to come in and trim away the excess. Then we'll just bring it back into focus for you. Then I'm just going to build up my head. It's looking in nice shape into the head. Sometimes you have to have some size 12s and even 14s. I'll tie these down to size 14 in your box. I'm happy enough with that, so just keeping the thread tight. Just going to come in with my whip finishing tool and just the one whip finish in the thread, nice and tight. And come in and trim away the accent. Now, just to finish off, first coat onto the head. Super glue. Now, when I put my super glue on, I'm putting my hand onto my vise and then supporting my right hand with my left thumb. Just to keep it nice and straight and steady. If you don't want the if you're using super glue, you just you don't want it going into your dressing. I'll just ruin the fly on you. And then once that's dry guys, I'll come in and put on a couple of coats of varnish. Just one wee hair there, I just want to take that away. It's alright. I'll come in, a couple of coats of varnish onto the head, just to seal up the super glue, stop the moisture bloom. And that's it. That fly there is an absolutely fantastic fly to have in your box, especially if you fish rivers that have peat stained water on it. Um, this fly, the Kelly fly itself, has taken 102 fish over three seasons. So, you know, it works. The fly works. And I would dare say it would work for the Dalgan too. So look, tie a few of those up. Get a few in your box. And hopefully they capture a few fish. And as always, many thanks for taking the time to view the video. And tight lanes.